Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Miss Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. So, Jessica, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. You've got a, got a glow and a, and a little bounce to your, your spirit. Do I? Yeah. You got your legs folded. You got the arm on the armrest, leaned in, ready for conversation. I'm trying to find a slimming angle. Oh. I think I found it. I don't think all of your angles are slimming. No. I, twice. Actually, don't. you're right. There are certain angles that I prefer not to be slim. Anyway. Yeah. You just. Coke bottle. Always find a way. Find a way what? To. To be you. To what? Appreciate your curves? Absolutely. Anywho. What's good in the hood? Man. um, Nothing. Today's Monday. It's been. A Monday. Mm-hmm. It was actually a really good Monday for me. I mean, I, I was busy. I I felt like I signed on to my computer probably around nine ish to like really start working, and I was on my computer all day. Got I was doing stuff all day long, but felt like I didn't really do anything. When I looked mm-hmm. up and it was time to go get solace from school, I was like, "Damn, what did I do all day?" I mean, I could see what I did, but it didn't feel like you did. I did as much as I should have done. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, nonetheless, it was productive. So I guess that's that's good. That's good. It's important for a Monday. It was a good Monday for me. I've tried to change my mindset about like designating feelings or expectations to certain days, and it's a lot of work, but. I'm starting to yeah, I'm gonna turn into one of those. Oh yeah. Manifest, manifest your day. I'm going to go into Monday and I'm going to think positively. Y'all should too. I mean, I'm not, you? I'm not one of those corny positivity people. They're overwhelming. I mean, you're kind of corny though. But I'm not one of those like, give me a high five. Like one of those people. I would hope not because that's from the Wayans brothers. It is. Intro. Um, But I very much so, I think I've recently just been exposed to a lot of people who have been talking about like, you know, making it to Friday, making it to the weekend. And I don't want to have a, I need to make it to mentality. Like, I don't want to think, oh, 2023 is going to be my year. So I have to make it to 2023. Like, I I don't always, I don't want to keep creating destinations in anticipation Mm. for better. Like Mm. I want the better in what I'm living in today. Mm. So every day is not going to be great. I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh my gosh, Monday is amazing. Blah, blah, blah. I did have a light Monday, you know, meetings were canceled. That was great. Um, cause it did lighten up my load and I embraced that. I appreciate it. I was like, you know, I'm so thankful that like my day isn't as packed, but I really am not trying to, be one of those i'm tr- i'm really trying to see if there can be a sh- if what kind of shift can happen if i'm not trying to just make it to the weekend make it to friday um but i'm just like these are the tasks of the day that need to get done let me get let me get them done because you know you'll want to make it till friday we have three kids like that means all day saturday we have the kids all day sunday we have the kids we have to keep them occupied and fed and all. so it's like there's always going to be a task required for each day so i just want to see what happens if i'm like this is monday this is what needs to be done monday whatever time i decide to stop i'm done and if it's not done and it needs to be done it rolls into tuesday and it gets done on tuesday but i don't want to i i don't want to burden myself with i absolutely need to make it to the weekend because the weekend is short i need to make it to vacation so you know, it's been like a week. Yeah. 
that I've been doing this. Um, and like I said, by no means are any days perfect. Like there's, there are days where I'm like, Ugh. but I, I feel like it just changes the whole trajectory of the day. I guess that's sure. the easiest way to put it. Oh, I can see that. You know, you're, uh, by, you know, saying, Oh, it's Monday. Oh, I got to get through Monday. Why is this Monday such a Monday? Mm-hmm. You kind of give the day power over you. You make yourself small mm-hmm. and you make yourself a prisoner to to Monday. Yes. And what you put out, your thought process, the energy you put out, um, most people would believe you're going to attract mm-hmm. the, the, the day that you're dreading. Yes. So I get that. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't, shouldn't give a day all your power. No. No, I understand. However... I got two weeks coming up where I'm going to be off. Off. And I can't wait. So, yeah, my black ass is just trying to get to Friday at 7 p.m. when I close my laptop. So, I'm just saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday can have all the power over me because come Friday, I'm off two weeks and my wife already has a honeydew list for me. I asked you to do one thing. It's a big thing. Plan family pictures. I don't plan. So it's a big thing. I'll, I'll plan the pictures. That's what you should have. You should have said that from the get go. Now wait till I get my two weeks of freedom. <laughs> I get my two, two weeks of walking papers and then give me, nah, I'll plan it. I just got to figure out the photographer and then if it's in the budget to get it done <laughs> but uh before we get too far in i uh, just wanted to shout out essence from vintage as i still can't say vintage essence company and we got one of the you want okay. do you have a lighter we got one of the we got one of the candles there's a lighter can we talk um i don't know i figured we weren't gonna light it i mean I'm, i would have lit it I meant to light it, but I when I realized I was going to set the iPad there, I figured it wouldn't really work. But had her on last week. We did. Great, uh, great interview. And great talk, shipping because I ordered last week and it's here. Talk about great energy. That's, that's essence. That's a good customer service right there. And yeah, nothing showed up cracked. So I know. I was looking you, to. United States Postal Service did you a, did you a solid. They really did appreciate it and i liked that you used recycled cardboard as filler in your box that was that was nice yeah i didn't see any of the the package i didn't even realize it was here until you Mm -hmm. said there it is on the counter (laughs) i was like oh yeah there was like a whole plethora of packaging and he was like oh did her candles come i was like well she commented on on my post the other day and said i guess what what day was it more was coming was it friday yeah she said there's some coming and i just don't remember seeing it come in the house. So that's what I got instead of getting your package. Your package came and I went to see what the package was, but my package with the candles was sitting on top. So I just grabbed the candles and I left yours. And Shay was like, Do you want help? And I was like, No, I left David's package outside. I mean, it was heavy. And it just it looked, it, and I was, I was dressed. Like I was already dressed to go out. So I didn't want to. Like bend down and pick up. It, it, I, mean, I mean, I was I, being I lazy. Want, I don't want to pick it up either. It was it's uh, equipment for work. Yeah, but it was your box. But the box was. It, it looked was, like it had been through. It some was bursting. Well, it was supposed to come. It went through Ian Friday. So when Dude dropped the other, it was supposed to be a pack, a set of four, four boxes. So when Dude brought three, he was like, "I don't know where the other one is." I'm like, <laughs> "Wait a minute, find that job requirement." Find job to know where the boxes are. He was like, "They just gave me three. But that's my that's my guy. Mm-hmm. That's my man. And it was already like, you know, a torrential downpour anyway. So I was like, that's what's up. He so I figured that. next day I'd, I'd see where the look at the tracking, see where the box was, and it was it was still in Pineville. So I figured it'd come out today, which which it did. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't in very good shape. I'm surprised it made it without mm-hmm. busting open. Which maybe that's why it didn't come. Maybe it did bust open because one of the sides was actually like all the way split. With all the equipment in there. I guess I hadn't opened it. I know what's in there. Okay. But 
it's um that's a lot so my my whole office is just like boxes yeah, that's why i keep closing the door yeah um so what's been going on with you shirt where do you get shirt from uh shirt came from target i saw it in the uh my, my black girls target group uh, not to feel let anyone feel isolated if you're not black to be a part of it, but one of your children is awake. I know which one is awake. Is I'm I'm so done. I'm done. So this one's gonna be on you. I've I've literally taken her back to bed six times in the last two days. She just won't sleep. It doesn't make any sense. She does not sleep. And this is why I wanted to record. I wanted to get started because I knew she was going to wake up. Is she falling down the stairs? Probably. <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to come through the curtain so uh-huh. she can be on camera. It is 10 10. 10 10. Hi, Sovereign. Why are you awake? You want to say hello to the camera? Mm, say hi. No? Okay. Well, this is real life. Real, real life? Vibes. We're just going to keep rolling. Real vibes, yeah. Real we'll, vibes. We'll do this. Maybe she'll fall back asleep. Um. You can't be... <laughs> now you need to keep that under control. You're going to be on my podcast, all right? No cough. You Okay. Is everything all right? Why are you not asleep? Why do you keep waking up? I put you to bed twice. Hmm? Well, I'm not sure if y'all have met Sovereign, but this is Sovereign. Who's very unhappy. <laughs> That's what she looked like when she was first born. Yeah. She was, she was mean mugging everybody. She was mean mugging for days. But anyway, we're just going to roll with it. So you asked what's new with me. Your shirt. My She's shirt, tired. yeah. Um... You know, I'm team team black woman. Anything that's gonna elevate and highlight. Did a black woman design it? Probably. Probably or, or they I did. I think I think so. Target's really good about making sure that their ethnic items are made by an ethnic person. Okay. And they've been really good about like fashion collaborations with with people of color. Um, there's one line I happen to be on a spending freeze that I implemented myself on when the um the line dropped and i chose not to shop but it was a lot to not buy any pieces but yeah so i'm in a facebook group that is run by black women that black women use to emphasize good things that target is selling so this was a shirt i saw i really liked it um if i didn't have a two-year-old in my lap you could see that it says love is in the hair and it is because black hair is amazing and can do wonderful things. And it is something that should be loved, which is why I tell the girls all the time that I love their hair. Right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, remember when we made the pledge to support smaller, <laughs> smaller uh, clothing lines? Yeah, but sometimes these designers are getting access to Target. Target. And they need to be supported there so that they can keep working and doing those collaborations too. Yeah, I haven't bought anything in a while. I bought you a hoodie, but it hasn't come yet. You bought me a hoodie? No. It's my love language. I appreciate you. Hoodies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I sent, um, tagged Bethany in a post said it's officially hoodie season. She was like, I bet you and Silas are just Head over heels. I was like, "You dang all right." Don't turn my kid. Walk out. You walk out in the kid. walk out in the morning. That brisk, cold air hits you. You go out at night. So like tonight, I'll probably just not go to sleep because that way, if you're not asleep, you can't get woken up. So maybe I go out back, have a cigar. And that brisk air. It's nothing better. Only thing that would be better is if we had a view of like uptown. Mm-hmm. From our 
from where we live. That would be perfect. That would be fantastic. But we don't. So uh, we need y'all to pray for us because we're in a place where we feel like we're about to buy a really big, make a really big purchase. And um, it's probably the biggest purchase. Once it's done, it'll probably be the biggest purchase we've made secondary to our house since we've been together. And that is a full-size SUV. Now, I know a lot of y'all are wondering, gas is like buku. Um, everything's expensive. Inflation's like 200%. Why would you be buying a car right now? Because we have no room in our vehicles. We got this little... <laughs> we got this little toddler over here. Her sister and her youngest sister. So that means we got three car seats, two car seats and a booster that have to go across the back seat. And then they just barely make it. They're like It's it's tight back there. It's tight. We make it work. But considering kids are only gonna get bigger, mm-hmm. you know, we gotta But we live by faith, not by sight, so we're not concerned about <laughs> gas prices. Because once you decide that you are buying a full size SUV, like you just, there's, you, you, there's no opportunity to to be concerned about mileage. Like yeah. I'll see when we were looking at some, I was looking at the fuel economies and it was like 15 city, 20 highway. And I wasn't even phased by it. Whereas like the old me, I'm looking like how many liter engine? Like it's a V8. Where am I? What do I need V8? No, I don't care because we need to fit these kids. And it was funny Yesterday, we were leaving my parents, and my dad was helping me get, I think, Sonoma in. And we couldn't get her seat in. Savi was already in her seat. You got to push. Yeah. So Savi's I'm, like, out. rearranging. And he was, like, he was so perplexed. He was, like, here in America, the three of you can't fit in this back seat. But if this car was in Ghana, we'd fit 10 adults and their children in there. And he's not exaggerating. Like, they would fit. Well, I've seen, I've seen the video of the little car in Africa. And, the and there's, like, 20 the, people get yeah. out. Like there, which I don't know. I feel like somebody doctored it, it, it. It might be an exaggeration, but like a traditional, like our our car. Yeah, I could see them fitting four, maybe five. I've also seen in intersections in Ghana, and I don't think I want my children riding in a vehicle in Ghana oh, through an intersection. Gamble. It's a gamble, but yeah. um, but yeah. So it's amazing that you know our car should comfortably sit five, but it, it doesn't. <sighs> And well, it's because of the seats. Yeah, it's definitely because of car seats. But we're stuck with car seats for at least five more years. I mean, <laughs> you mean what? If the back windows are tinted, nobody ever know. Now I'll come down here and try to go to sleep. No, Wake to up, sleep. Wake up, champ! This is your podcast debut. You got to smile for the camera. No. So anyways, y'all pray for us because we need to figure out. Give us favor. Give us a good APR. What other acronyms do we need? Honestly, I just want, you know, it could be, it could be used. It ain't got to be new. I just need it to work for us for like (coughs) the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. It needs to work long enough that it can become Silas's first car. No, Silas, I don't want Silas driving that thing. Because you know she's gonna be driving all her she little friends. Be, she's gonna be smacking cars left and right like no, that Saul's big gonna old drive tank. Like a G, she's gonna end up being like the school mom driving everybody around. I can't. I can't even. I, I don't even think about Saul's driving. I think that's just. I think Saul's will be a phenomenal driver. Saul's driving means that I'm like forty plus. I'm not ready to think about that. Although I got a compliment the other day. Somebody said I, I don't look 34. Nor what does I, 34 look like? Not me. <laughs> apparently. So I'm more, I mean, they said I was more mature than 34. But I didn't look 34. So when I tell people I'm 34, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Because you don't look that old. But you behave older than that. So I said, thank you. Appreciate that random person. A random person recognized that you behave. Uh, I mean, somebody from work, but I can't remember who it was. Oh. <laughs> was like, so, what was this, a Harris Teeter? I can't remember who it was, which is bad. I think, you know, they say um, long COVID like affects 
um, your brain. Your brain was affected long before. I mean, COVID. It, it, it was, but it, long COVID didn't help. So I think, because I'll, I'll be sitting here thinking like somebody's name that I should know, and I can see like the person in my mind. Like I know the person. Like I'm looking in my mind's eye. I'm looking right at them, but I can't call their name. So I have to like go to Google and search something. It's called like the the memory process is called shelving. So when you um, you kind of categorize things that are alike. So if you think of one, it'll help you remember something else. So if it was, if I'm trying to think of an actor, I see their face, right? Like I see them like right here in front of me, looking right at them, but I can't think of their name. I'll Google obviously like a movie they've been in. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I see the title of the movie, it triggers, it name. triggers their name. <clears throat> and I never really had that problem before. Uh, until like recent, I don't know exactly when it started. I'm assuming maybe last October, but this is long COVID, man. Got me. So many, so many unfortunate things have happened to me. I got knocked out in a football game. <laughs> Hit my head on the on a backboard trying to dunk. The actual backboard, not the padding. My head hit the backboard. And I got the scar to prove it. Ask anybody who was there. Your boy got hops. I've been with you 11 years and I've not seen that scar. You haven't seen it? It's on the right side of my head. It's right. It's well, you probably can't see it now because of my locks, but it's right here. Ask AJ. I'll tell you. He was there. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID took me out. You listed three things. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. Those listed, are big things. Like life you've had. A concussion that got me knocked out of the game. They had to cut me out of my clothes. My mama still got my jersey or half of it <laughs> because they had to cut me out of it. Took me in the ambulance. You remember when Alan was on last year and he was joking how I did the thumbs up from the, <laughs> from the green? No, I didn't. Mainly because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know where I was. I just saw the stadium lights. I was like, oh, bright lights. And I had my roommate laughing at me, AJ, because we were, we were reminiscing when I went up and saw him last weekend or weekend before last. I was sitting there in my scrubs and he was just laughing at me. Mind your friends. Young kids out there, make sure that when you. How did we get here? I don't know. Um, Let's get back on. I'm talking about my memory. Track. Okay, so what are you want to talk about? Um, let's see. So we survived Hurricane Ian, tropical storm. We will rebuild. <laughs> Yo, uh, but real, real talk. Shout out to everybody down there in the southwest Florida, southwest Florida that was hit hard. I know um, Fort Myers Beach got annihilated. Uh, among among other places, so uh, I know they've started the rebuilding process. I know DeSantis mm-hmm. was out there um, doing his thing. You know, so, apparently he voted like no for. I was like, I was like, I was like, um, <laughs> but it's so good that, but, that political part. Some political parties are not petty because I'd have been like <laughs> denied. Um, shout, shout out to everybody trying to recoup and rebuild down there in Florida. But like, use that PPP money. We got, we got family. We got some family down in Florida. Use your tax free uh, PPP. My money. work is is based based out of there uh, on the East Coast, at least. So, um, most people have made it out okay. So, but thoughts and you know, Sweetheart, this is why you just need with to with people who that. who lost people and lost homes and things like that. She needs to wake up. She she's down here. She needs to work. She needs to just be in bed. She needs to, to work. Get comfortable. And then trying to see herself on camera. <laughs> is that what she's doing? Is that my is that my angle, girl? Is that it? Yeah. So we survived. And um, I feel like a lot has happened since our last. You know, surviving episode. surviving Ian should be uh, Cynthia's next book. <laughs> She's going to get you. Hey, she no, she's going to laugh first. <laughs> Ian probably won't appreciate it. But her that, husband. That would be a great book. That would be. Surviving Ian. <laughs> <laughs> like a storm, he rushed through my life. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so there's Ian. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad this storm is over. Uh, Lizzo. Lizzo's making news, breaking hearts. But there's what's his face. Uh, so I had no clue who this gentleman was, but 
his name kept coming up. And so I decided to do some research and figure out who he is and why I keep seeing his name because he's an athlete. And I don't really, there are very few athletes I, I stay accustomed to. So you had. I don't drink a whole lot of vodka. You don't? It's not my thing. It's not. I don't get down with that clear. No. But this is pretty good. It is. We're going to tell you about it soon. Just got to get paperwork signed. Um, so Brett Favre is a retired football player, correct? I don't know that I've ever heard this name in my life, but I kept hearing it. Brett Favre, Brett Favre. Mm-hmm. And he kept coming up because of Nia Long's fiance. Mm-hmm. So I guess people were saying, if we're going to come for him, we better come for Brett too. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, I mean, we're all coming for a black man. If there's a white man we can come for too, let's let's come for, for Brett as well. Um, I actually don't even know what Brett looks like. but um, He's white. I figured as much. His name gave off white vibes. Um, do you know a black Brett? Yeah. Lies. <laughs> You are lying. <laughs> Actually, the only bread I know is white. See? But See? I don't know every bread in the world, though. Most of them are white. Um, so. It's racist. I looked him up, heard some things, mm-hmm. that he was essentially getting paid by like the poorest state in the country that needs all the welfare dollars it can get. I guess he paid some of it back, but Brett was, was trending. It's like five, five million, right? Yeah. No. Um, and then there were like conversations where he's like, is this money going to get trapped back to me? And they were like, oh, no. He wasn't worried about what, he, he, was, what he was doing. He was worried about was whether it or not come back to him. Was, where people were going to find out. And yeah. then I know they said his daughter went to his alma mater. And I think some of the funds were used to pay for either the volleyball court or a library or something. And But he's not poor. Like He's not a poor individual. But he's taking millions out of the welfare system and mississippi is not a great state in terms of its offering to its so, to anyone listening uh, on the audio if you're hearing a slight snore it's because you know her sovereign has no. officially tapped out and is snoring go ahead i don't know the last time she slept on me like this I can tell you. I'll, I can tell you the last time she's going to be sleeping on you during a live recording of Rush Vibes. Oh, my baby. Yeah, whatever. Um. So yeah. So Mississippi is known for like being the fiftieth state for everything when it comes to like literacy, welfare. It's like the. It's just low on the totem pole for pretty much everything. So. It's interesting that they would utilize state funds for paying this man to make appearances that he allegedly didn't even make. And there's evidence to show that he didn't make it. But I don't know. I mean, it it, it goes down a political rabbit hole and it just makes you wonder, like, why did someone think this was a good idea? Like, there are so many things that happen. And I pray to never have to be tested in such a way. But I hope that if I ever am to be tested in this type of way, I'll pass. But it's just like somebody in an office thought, okay, we're going to give this guy $5 million of our wealth, federal federal dollars of our welfare, from our welfare fund that's supposed to feed our citizens who are, or, you know, provide housing. I'm assuming like, what's that, what's it called when you pay housing stipends, whatever, um, comes from this fund, from welfare. But someone said, oh, no, it would do us greater to give five million of this, these funds to Brett Favre. I don't even know what team he played for. I don't know. Does he even live in Mississippi? Whatever. Um, but just the logic that someone was like, this is a bright idea that, that like I always wonder because it's so easy to sit on the outside of a situation and pass judgment. But. There was someone in this situation who thought this was a good idea. So that, like, that's always my first thought. Like, let me never be put in a situation that I, my initial, th- I guess I want to make sure I always have enough wisdom that if I'm put in a questionable situation, 
I won't make a questionable decision. Because the wise decision would have been, no, Brett Favre, we're not going to give you $5 million or however many million dollars out of our welfare budget for our state's citizens, residents who need it. For you, who probably live in a mansion, mm-hmm. probably makes ESPN appearances, like Fox Sports, whatever. But I don't know. So that's that's something that bothered me. So there was him, and then there was Nia Long's fiance. I can't remember his name, but the coach of the Celtics. Ime Doka. Hmm? Ime. Ime. Yeah. Ime be single. Um, who chose to have an affair or cheat? Because they're not married. They're engaged. They've been engaged for 10 years on Nia Long. And there were a lot of interesting responses to this cheating scandal. Um, I heard there was like one woman who initially they thought she was the, the, the cheaty. So people were like, oh, okay. Cheaty. The cheaty. Um, people were like, oh, okay. And then they realized like, no, it was somebody else. And I guess she's like the wife of somebody in like the head of the front office of the team. So they were like, that wasn't very smart, Ime. Um, and then people were saying, I saw somewhere that Nia Long is a national treasure. Like, how dare you? And it spun off conversations in terms of like, every woman can be cheated on. And like, just the line, like, you know, even Beyonce was cheated on and all of that stuff. Um, so people were, I was seeing conversations where people were trying to figure out like, well, then what kind of woman doesn't get cheated on? Because if you can cheat on Nia, Nia Long, well, then... Who, who can't be cheated on. Um, and then, you know, there were defenses. Somebody, I'd read somebody's response where they said, you know, she has a bad attitude and just trying to justify why she was cheated on, um, which I don't know that you can justify. Like, if you che- if you cheat on someone, you cheat on them. There's really no, like, blaming their character, I guess, um, for cheating on them. Yep. Like, that's, that's a flaw on you. So... There was just, that was what was happening, I feel like, in the news of sports. I'm actually very impressed that I'm caught up on sports news in that in that capacity. Um, but, yeah. I, too, am proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of this kid who went to sleep in my lap. It'd been better if she went to sleep and stayed asleep in her bed. Her big, full-size full bed. Full-size bed that we spent money on. Yeah, it's an amazing bed. It's ridiculous. All right, your turn. What do you think? Think about what? Brett Favre and Ime. I got to tell you. You don't care. I really don't. Um, the Ime, the Ime, Nia Long thing is weird because, like, information's come out about it, but not a whole lot of information's mm-hmm. come out about it. Like, we don't really know what the actual story is. Um, but yet the Celtics came out and, you know, obviously announced that they had suspended them for a year and that they would be naming an interim coach. And, um, you know, obviously there are some talking heads, people who think, who claim to know exactly what happened, who are speaking vaguely about it, but mm-hmm. not really saying what happened. So it's, it's just a weird thing where, you know, obviously it was substantial, whatever the infractions were, because they suspended him mm-hmm. for, for a year, year, but they didn't fire him, which is interest and interesting. It's an interesting punishment. It's it's an interesting way to go about it if you're not going to fire him, mm-hmm. I guess. So, so I don't know. It's just it's just it was just weird. It's weird. Um, the social media thing, Neil Long, I get it. Uh, but yeah, anybody, not, not just any woman could be cheated on, anybody, any mm-hmm. person can, can be cheated on. So that's not really surprising. But um, yeah, it was, it was a wild, it's just kind of a wild thing because he just took the Celtics to the finals in his first year as a head coach. And now... She just moved, apparently. Yeah. And they and they've been together like you said for a minute. And they got ten like, years. Yeah, they got a they got a, kid. a whole kid. So, but people, I did read somewhere or hear somewhere that um, she like, I guess he knew it was coming out, or he waited for it to come out until after she moved, because obviously she probably would not have 
uprooted her life for this. So I know I mean, people. I know people were upset about that too. Um, but pretty, I'm like, I'm pretty sure she can just move back. She probably can. <laughs> um, but I'm it's not just, counting by his money. I'm just saying. I'm sure she can she, move she's back. Got it. She, but she ain't done a movie since that Netflix one. That was like. Let's not talk about that. Bad. Let's not talk about that. I love Nia Long, but that was bad. That was really bad. So yeah, so there was that. Um, Lizzo and the flute. So Lizzo was. I read it, but I forgot. But she was essentially permitted to blow play <laughs> not the proper way to play. Um, permitted to blow what? <laughs> <laughs> to blow James Madison's flute. James Madison's what? His, flute, his crystal flute. Um, don't make that dirty. I wasn't trying That's to make that not, dirty. You said blow. I'm just trying um, to figure out what she was blowing. To play his flute. It was James Madison, right? I think it was James Madison's 200 year old crystal flute. Um, and people are in, in uproar. So, yeah. you know, first it was a black person as being a mythical mermaid, an alleged mythical mermaid. Uh, and now Lizzo black woman's playing the flute yeah. and people won't blatantly say why they're upset. You know, I, people have been alluding. I've, I've seen like people are upset that she twerked while playing the flute. Um, so that seems to be like the foundational reason why people are offended. Uh, and I think I've had a lot of thoughts about this. Um, one thought being why, like, why do we care? Like, not that why do we care? Like, congratulations, she's playing a 200-year-old flute. It's not a big deal to me. Uh, you know, like, some racist former slave owner and his crystal flute. Like, not a big deal. If it was, like, the flute of the first, you know, black flutist, then I'd be like, oh, wow, like, what an honor. But it's not a big deal. James Madison was probably, you know, a jerk. So there's that. But I don't know if you know... But several years ago, Taylor Swift was granted the ability to play, maybe it was John Adams, some fa some former president's piano. And there was no uproar. I do kind of remember that. Um, you know, it was a big deal. Like, oh, I guess it was a big deal. I don't remember. I bet um, you, you know, who I bet was excited about it? The Swifties. The Swifties were... The Swifties were hyped. Swifties, Swifters, whatever. Yeah. They were probably lit about it. But, you know, no one made a fuss. Granted, she didn't twerk while she was playing it. I don't know if Taylor can twerk. She, um, she ain't got the anatomy for it. She does not. She probably has the anatomy to try. It would look painful, <laughs> but she could try. So, you know, you, <laughs> you, you have to wonder, is it because she twerked with the flute? Is it because she twerked while being black playing a crystal flute? Or is it just the simple fact that she played the flute that belonged to a former president? For me, it's no big deal. I I recognize Lizzo's talent in terms of just as an artist, what she's done um, for her sector, for, you know, for herself. I know she lived in her car for a year, but mm -hmm. I mean, she is a talented musician i think i would assume maybe a member of the philharmonic or some symphony orchestra should be the one to play a flute like i don't know what board like agreed and voted and said oh let's have lizzo play this 200 year old flute but i mean if it's from that perspective in terms of like, okay, she's just a pop star. Like we could have had someone with more credentials, qualification. I'm sure there's a black flutist in like the Boston symphony or something. Okay. I could go with that, but it just seems like people are upset that this full size black woman twerked and played a flute that didn't belong to her. Um, but yeah, that's my tangent. I'll let you respond. Yeah, so you don't care. I guess <laughs> people were upset because there's a flute that belonged to the president, James Madison. Mm -hmm. She's got a school out in uh, out in Virginia. I almost went there. Just kidding. I don't know. Let's go. There. But they went. I think James Madison. They went to like 
They made it like a crazy run in the men's basketball to the final four. It's like some odd years ago. Not really essential to this conversation. Mm-hmm. But you know what I th- you know what I think about when I hear people saying, "Oh, that was a flute that was owned by one of the presidents of the United States." The forty fifth president of the United States. Your boy. Please, I don't claim him. He used to poop tweet. Like these are just people. Wait, how did we know this? <laughs> I mean, because he tweeted at random time. Like, I, I, there's no way he could. As much as he tweeted, there's no way he couldn't have poop tweeted. Like he, I mean, just, let's just be real. I mean, if you think about it, he used to poop tweet. There was he was he probably, probably went off on one of them threads he he put out. He was probably dropping a mean deuce. Like these are men. These are people. Mm-hmm. They they held the highest office in the land. It comes with esteem. You show respect. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, they're just people. Mm-hmm. They're just men. James Madison had a flute. So what? It's in the Library of Congress. Nobody's messing did with it. Did he play this flute or did he just own the flute? I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's an object. And obviously the Library of Congress felt comfortable enough with letting Lizzo play it. So she played it. I don't understand. I don't understand the hoopla. Um... I think it's I think it's great. I think it's like a it's creating like an intersection of like culture and history. Like Liz Lizzo's following is mostly younger, like the, whatever the generation is behind us, and then even some people in our generation, the younger millennials or the middle <laughs> middle aged millennials appreciate her. Obviously, not a whole lot of people knew that this flute existed. So yeah. it's 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 a great awareness thing. So maybe more people will be interested in the Library of Congress as as an entity and the kind of things that it houses. Because so, I thought they just had books. See, library equals books. Exposure. Mm-hmm. So I think it was a great it was a great stunt, if you want to call it that. That's probably a better word to use. But I mean, in terms of people getting upset about it, like I think people just I think in this day and age, people just like to be upset. I think people just like people are just racist and they just don't want to call it what it is. And I would rather, I I think that might be the one benefit. And I would say the one benefit of Trump, um, but he still didn't really give people, I, I hate saying, having to say this, the confidence to be racist, but just call a spade a spade. Like, you sim- it boils down to the fact that you don't like that it's a black woman who has been given the right to play this flute. And I'd rather at this point, like, you know, we've got the Proud Boys. We've got, you know, the, the Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers. Although they're not exclusively racist. White, um, white supremacists, I don't think. What are they? Partial white supremacists? I just don't think that that's the, I don't think that that's the thing. I think you would, you would assume so. But I know, I think. Are there black oath keepers? Is Kanye think, an oath keeper? <laughs> I don't know if Kanye is or not. I could see Kanye as an oath keeper. But I, I think there are actual, well, you know, there's black Proud Boy people too, I think. Yeah. I mean, but Kanye doesn't read books. So, I mean, they're black everything. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Kanye. Um, so I'd rather, if you're just going to be racist, just be blatant with it. Like, just, just say it. You know, don't get upset is, about a mythical. Let me, let me, let me ask you something. Uh-huh. Let me ask you something. I'm just asking a question. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm doing. Simple question. Is it possible that it's not so much that it was a black woman who was strutting around a stage, strutting about playing James Madison's flute as it's A woman who um, dresses to a certain audience, dresses in a provocative manner in public spaces, and a woman who has a lot of influence over younger girls, and that audience doesn't like the idea of their girl seeing that image. A woman who has been known to do an act with her body that a certain audience may not be all that... um, uh, thrilled with in terms of twerking mm-hmm. because it, it's you know 
demeaning to women or whatever or however you want to like is it possible that it's not so much the race of Lizzo but it's what Lizzo represents to them I'm not saying just in like from my standpoint because we're talking about a certain section of people Mm -hmm. when you say just don't be racist cause paid is paid maybe they are maybe they aren't fine but is it possible that it's the idea of Lizzo Lizzo, the idea, like, uh, as a um, represent representation of something that they reject, not so much her race. Is that possible? In a perfect world, yes. This is not a perfect world, so it's because she's black. Okay. I just, I mean, cool. I just don't know. I just, again, I, I'm not. I mean, Lizzo's not like the first role model I'd want for my kids. But I do appreciate the fact that like this is a woman who is a well trained flutist. She she can play the flute. She sure. Liz was talented. She's mean but she can play the flute and drink tequila she's, from the bottle at the same time. That's a that's an added talent. That is a talent, yes. It is. So I mean that in itself, because she's not just a person who is dressing pro- provocatively and you know twerking she has there's talent to back it up because there are lots of people who are out there just dressing provocatively and twerking and that's where they cap out lizzo has more to offer if lizzo decided she wanted to pivot professionally she could do a whole you know flute album um she could join a a, like a a symphony and all of that so I, i do appreciate that aspect of her but you know i think as a black woman it's easy to see how everything you do is demonized. Hmm. Everything you do, like, you know, dancing provocatively, you know, if what makes it dancing provocatively, if I'm out, if I'm home with a group of female friends and we're playing music and I'm dancing, is that, is it still provocative? Like, does the setting make it provocative? Is it the audience that makes it provocative? Like, I guess like these are things that I I would assume so. Right. Because I mean, you dress pretty comfortably here at home. You wouldn't go outside like that. Right. So I guess the setting does make a difference. I wouldn't, but that's because of how others would perceive it. Well, yeah, that's what Um, we're talking about. (laughs) But that's, I think that's more so for men. Mm, I don't know. I mean, women are some, judgmental some, some, too. Some aunties out there be like, oh, oh, "Why she, yeah, why she, are, why she came are, out the house looking like that?" I know judgy. her mama. I know, I know her mama and tell her to come up. I'm judgy. I be judging. I judge myself too. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I just don't. I think, and this is a broader conversation that I would need more time to develop. Mm. But I do think that mm. a lot of things that I just think of like younger self going out in the to the to a club with you know some white friends and you know a song comes on and they start dancing so like back that ass up comes on they start dancing i start dancing i feel as if the perception for which for their dancing is defined differently than what mine would be Mm. and a lot of that comes with how my body is built I didn't choose the build of my body. I I don't choose the fact that I'm able to, you know, have more control over what my body can and can't do in a f- setting where there is music and rhythm. Um, but I would be more demonized as opposed to, you know, a white counterpart that I'd be with. So, you know, I think that's where these microaggressions of micro racism that people don't recognize they're doing because mm. there could be a white performer who fits the Lizzo image, you know, fuller figured dresses provocatively can play the flute twerks. But I don't think people would find as much offense if she was playing it. They would, they, you know, they do their research and they'd find out why she is qualified And I think when black women are qualified to do something, our qualifications are nullified by everything that is seen as a negative. 
So that's why that's why I say like what are the defining who are the defining groups because there are certain aspects of blackness that are used against us that we don't have control over. Like I think about back when I was a kid and you know you had the rule of how long your skirt could be. So your skirt had to be up to your middle finger when you stretched your arm down. So, you know, I could be the same height, same size as someone, but a skirt or shorts would fit me differently because I have wider hips, I have a bigger butt. So, you know, I stretch my arms out, the type of shorts I would have to wear compared to a friend of mine whose body is built differently. So I, by default, look like I'm being, you know, scandalous, provocative based off of what I'm wearing, but that's not the case. I'm just wearing what fits. Now, I mean, Lizzo's definitely exposing a lot, but, um, that's part of her image. That's part of her, her presentation. So I guess I think, and maybe because I'm a black woman, I have to think on those levels. Um, like when I go out with some, when I go out with a friend and I see their outfit, I, I do think like if someone of a different race was wearing this outfit, I wonder how people would perceive them. Um, but when, unless you're in those shoes, you don't have to think like that. Like you, you have the privilege to not have to think like that. You know, you can wear a little skirt and yeah, I mean, there are some things that are universal. You wear a little skirt, you, somebody's going to judge you regardless, but there are some people who are judged more and they don't always have control over it. I think it's cool that Lizzo got to play the flutist. If I was Lizzo personally, I wouldn't want to, I'd be like, yo, dude own people who look like me so he can keep his little crystal flute. So there's that. Um, but there's also a power element. Like here I am 200 years later, this black woman who James Madison's probably losing his mind right now. If he had the cognitive ability to at the fact that my crystal flute is being held by this woman on stage while she's shaking what her mama gave her. So, I mean, it's all perspective. Cool. Yeah. I have no nothing else to add. Okay. So, but thanks for that perspective. I appreciate it. It's hard out here for a black woman. Clearly. Um. So, I was made aware of something. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Um, while looking on social media. And maybe this is indicative of my social class. But apparently, <clears throat> excuse me, you can gauge the mindset of someone and whether or not they're like a leader in their group based on the construction, the composition of their plate at a at a function. So there's a video that came out. Apparently and this this one this one chick, like she's been all over my timeline lately and I guess she's like a life coach, social media influencer. Everybody's a life coach. Um on and on TikTok. I'm a life coach. Uh name is Tammy, I think is her is her name. So she, I think she actually had someone else. It was her and another woman um, among a group of women. Um, and the one woman was talking about her, her plate in comparison to, I think it was Miss Tammy, or I'll just call her the other woman. She was basically, while eating, licking her fingers, she was kind of like putting her hand over another woman's, the other woman's plate, saying that your food is basically like sloppy, so it's, it's not given. <laughs> it's given low vibration because... Um, like the food is touching and it just looks, looks sloppy as opposed to her plate, which was more spaced out. It had, um, it was arranged. Right. So I guess that meant she was able to identify herself as a leader because clearly a leader's plate wouldn't have low vibration. So this, I had to self reflect <laughs> because <laughs> clearly I've been given the lowest of vibrations with my plate because I don't give a damn when I load my plate up. I'm just trying to eat. 
my food touch all the time. My food, like, maybe mixing and everything. So uh, we'll play it, even though I know you've seen it a couple of different times. But I want to watch it again because it's it's good content. And then we'll we'll get your reaction to it. So. They put this on my plate. I will not. They, no, I don't do what they do. I do what I do. Mm. I'm a missionary. I believe it. Mm. But she's I would coach. never eat a plate that looked like this. You mm. couldn't pay me a million dollars to do that to myself. Mm. Oh my God. And it comes deserve better than that. It's mm. low vibration. And you took it. I would have been like, I'm playing like that. I'll tell you what I want. You'll tell me what I want. So my thought process is if you can put it on my plate, but I don't have to eat it. I got the distance. I won't even look at it and look that make you look bad. I'm a queen. Queen's plate from like. Mm. If, I, if we said two plates, we played together. I said, who's royalty? They would say this person. Mm. I agree. That's a good way. <laughs> this is my shit. Yeah, because it's a lot of people that just let people give them what they want them to have, mm. and they accept mm. it. And Storm is teaching me right now. Yeah, yeah. Cold Storm is teaching me don't accept what they put on your. Mm. Yo, so you know what kills me about this? <laughs> It's like, it's like mm, in the background, like, oh, yeah, like she in here, like, like she's sitting on the on the stone among people, like just preaching. Visionary. Royalty. Huh? So from now on, when we go out, you know, you all you all a lot of times you all you offer to make my plate. Don't come right here with them low vibration, all right? I don't want that low vib- that low vibrational mess. You make my plate as if I'm royalty, all right? So I need you to understand. <laughs> We're not doing that hood rest. <laughs> We're not doing that hood rest stuff no more, all right? Because I'm a visionary. <laughs> I don't know why this tickles me so much, but... I don't know, man, like a plate, like, dang. I just, I, I, I guess people just keep inventing ways to separate like the haves and the have nots, the elites from the non elites. I didn't know it came down to how you make a plate. I mean, I mean, it's paper plate. But at least now I know So I can be better Because I know if I'm to think of myself as a leader I gotta make my plate a certain way So My eyes have been open So I'm curious What's your um, What's your takeaway from From this great video we just watched I just I don't know where to begin <laughs> this ingrees my spirit <laughs> because what it really boils down to is this need for everybody to be deep. Yeah. Mm. When when you're <laughs> not, when they're not, I mean, oh, there's there's like a small message in there. So and, what, what do you, the, no, 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 no. What you will not do. Listen what to you what will, I'm saying. What you will not do on Rush Vibes is give that but, video. Any sense me, of no, validity. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying there's a small message in there. The message isn't even coming from the life coach. Um, the message is coming from old girl who's clearly like her her sheep follower. Um, and it has nothing to do with like the plate. The, it, it, it's more of a. What's the word I'm looking for? Dang, COVID took my ability to come up with oh, to remember oh, oh, words. Oh, okay. I had COVID while pregnant. So okay. this different. Yeah, well, COVID but, um, is, a real you, thing. You'll know the literary term when I say it. But. In terms of like, don't take what someone else puts on your plate. That that statement, not talking about this barbecue that they're at, but more so like I that was one thing that I did say, like, you know, the correct context that itself could have been profound, like people can give try and give you stuff. People can try to tell you things about yourself. You don't need to take what someone puts on your plate. That's really the only thing that if you di- if you force to find something of depth, it's there. But this 
crap about royalty and you look at this plate and you look at that plate. Royalty is not eating barbecue chicken and potato salad. Like Queen Elizabeth, Meghan your legs, Markle, your legs wide open. with your legs open, licking your fingers, like this whole interaction when have you ever seen the queen of england in a bathing suit like the, the, this is not an this is not a royal interaction well let's not act like the image of royalty is like the monarch has a monopoly on royalty no, i'm just saying okay. like there are okay. there are modern example of royalty um that's it like that this whole whatever poolside whoever's apartment complex pool they're at <laughs> That they got the grill and rent, the charcoal, rent, rent the clubhouse. like this. This is none of this is is a royal experience. Yeah. So you're among the paupers by default. Um, but I think there's such a problem with one. Everyone's a life coach. Everyone has equipped themselves. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not me disrespect. There are there are genuine and legitimate life coaches who have trained and gotten all of the proper experience and the backing to coach people in life and then there are life coaches who are just self self proclaimed proclaimed life coaches and then there are people who i don't know if it's an emptiness or just a need to follow or to be instructed because you don't want to take responsibility for your own life so you'll let anyone pour whatever false wisdom they've created into you and i feel like that's what this whole interaction is. Cause mm. old girl's sitting there talking about like sh she's absorbing nuggets mm. that aren't there. Like this is yes. fool's gold nuggets that she's dropping. Yeah. Like there's no, there's, there's no substance. She's one. I'm annoyed at how she's disrespecting the plate. Like get your licked fingers. Yeah. How you gonna, that do, close from my, to gonna, my, but I guess when you, when you royalty, you can do that. To no, like, you can't. <laughs> you, can lick your you don't have a fork. You're not sitting at a table. Like, and no. that's the problem. That's the problem with these people who are life coaches and these people who are qualifying unqualified people. Cause she's sitting there co-signing everything she's saying and she's speaking nonsense. People yeah. can look at this plate and look at that plate. Who's got the royal plate? No, one, no, none of these plates are royal. You're eating off of paper plates. It's not even like the like the good disposable plates, like the Chinette ones, like the plastic, the real plastic one. This is Dixie, the Dixie Dixie plates. Like Don't be disrespecting this, this, Dixie. I'm not. We got Dixie in our cabinet. That's why you don't need to be disrespectful. Dixie, I rock with Dixie, but like this whole interaction for me just shows the desperation for people to have someone give them wisdom, even if the wisdom isn't wise. And that's why people are making foolish decisions and doing foolish things because she's going to go away talking about, you know, she's going to go to some, like if she's dating someone and he makes her a plate, this plate has low vibration and I'm royalty and I'm not going to take like, like it's, it's a ripple effect. And even though uh, we're laughing at it, someone else watched this and they were like, yo, you gotta make my this, play is, a certain this way. is facts. Straight facts. This is facts. Straight fire. And you're not, I'm not going to sit here and be in this relationship with you while you're making me low vibration plates. I mean, I I'm get, royalty. I get it. So I, I, I need you. Like this is a ripple effect. Like this yeah. is, is pure food. Like, and maybe there's more context from like the top half of this conversation we need, but you are eating barbecue chicken from someone's apartment pool. Like where, where's the level of elevation? It's in the plate, Jess. It's not in the plate. <laughs> you don't have a fork. You don't have a napkin. It's in the plate, man. You're licking your fingers. And old girl's co-signing. That's because you, you, when you were visionary, you can do that. No. Like, and what was the big deal about her plate? Because she had like a, a burger in a bun and a hot dog in a bun. Yeah, it was it was partitioned. It was spaced it's out. It's a paper plate. I understand. I that. would say her plate is low vibration because the thing with cookout food is if you don't get all the food you're going to eat on the first there's run. There's going to be no seconds. By the time, no you, go, when, there's gonna be by seconds. time you realize something was good and you're going to go back for more, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And then what? Now you, no, now you're no, vibrating no, no, low no because you're hungry. And no low is no vibrations. So there ain't nothing left to get. That, that, that's, I just don't like people who force to be deep. Like mm -hmm. I feel like depth and by depth, I'm talking about like someone speaking wisdom or dropping something and be like, Ooh, that was fire. Whatever. 
whatever terminology you want to use those things are so organic like it's just in natural it flows like a lot of times when people say something that it's like oh wow that hit me they're not trying this person this woman is clearly trying to sound like she's delivering something of substance and she's not like it's, it's just empty it's an empty vessel and that's what annoys me and the fact that this has been circulating and i guess there's like a follow-up video where they're on a boat oh right. yeah i gotta go find it but it, it's good content but this is why you can't follow everybody and this is why you can't you just can't follow everybody everybody who has wisdom isn't wise and I know that sounds contradictory. I would say and not everyone who offers wisdom is wise. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That was deep. Yeah. That was that was a high vibration yeah, statement. Yeah, I'm a leader. That's what I do. So, um, that was great. No, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy that video. Yeah, there's a follow up video. I, I'm, I'm as soon as we finish, I'm on gonna a look boat. for. They're on a look, boat. I'm gonna go look for it. Um. I would be remiss if I uh, let us get out of here without mentioning your boy um, who was at his fashion show and uh, was photographed in a number of photographs uh, wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt. That boy, your boy, Goes by the name of uh, what are we calling him now? Yay, that's his name. I'm, I'm, I'm. He say he goes by Yay. He's on that Diddy arc where, I, his name's changed so many times I can't keep up. No, I think it's Yay. I think he's Yay. Look, Kanye Nicodemus West needs to get his life together. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of the foolishness. So you know what this is. You know who he is. He's probably related to Old Girl. No, you know what this is. This is a cry for help. It's bait and switch. It's easily bait and switch, and we're and when we're part of it by talking about it. You know, he knew, he knew what he was doing. He knew people was gonna be all up in arms. Mm -hmm. Gonna come for Kanye, and you know what it's gonna do? It's gonna get that other side stirred up, and they're gonna go buy them T-shirts, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, I knew that Kanye was was all right." Why lives matter? No, they don't. <laughs> So I, I, I yes they do. Um, All, I mean no. Look, I mean so, life matters because so, life was created from God. But I, no, no, I, no. So I, I I come at this <clears throat> from a uh, you're an all eyes matterer. No no no. no. I, I come at this from from a different angle because. It's, it's it's a ploy to get attention. That's all it is. Oh, definitely. So it, it's not something that we should react to. We all know, you know, why Black Lives Matter became a statement uh, in the summer of 2020. So it was before 2020. Oh, I'm saying uh, why it came to a height. It was heightened. <clears throat> um, and uh, you know, we know we know that when people responded with like White Lives Matter. For the most part, um, it was a deliberate response. Mm -hmm. uh, some would say it was coded response. Um, but I mean, it's Kanye, man. It's like Kanye do. Kanye's gonna do what Kanye's gonna do. And the more, it, like, if because every time Kanye does something, we say, "Oh, I'm done with Kanye." Oh, you know, he's this. Oh, he's that, and that's why. Blah 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 blah. But if we didn't care about Kanye as much as we say we don't we wouldn't react like this when he does things like wear a white lives matter t-shirt we wouldn't give him any any thought wouldn't care I think the we, only wouldn't, reason we wouldn't we wouldn't react so we either gotta people either gotta jump off the train completely or or stay on and react to everything he does but don't sit here and say Oh, I don't care about Kanye. He's gone. He's lost. I'm, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not messing with him. I don't care what he does. And then every time he does something, you drop a 15 tweet thread think piece in who? because I'm just oh, saying. I was like, who went in? <laughs> because What's Kanye is 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 Kanye, and again, so I I just I just wish people would just just ignore. Him. 
I think it's hard. I think people genuinely care about Kanye. And I think, and I can't speak for myself. I have an appreciation for Kanye um, because, and I think I've said it before, musically, my coming of age was college. You know, transitioning from senior year of high school into freshman year of college where I kind of had full autonomy of, of what I was taking in musically. And Kanye was was fresh and, you know, college dropout. Like his music was was I don't want to say different, but it was it made you think you appreciate it. You vibe like you you got you had people who were about it. So I think people genuinely care because seeing the demise of a person can be difficult. And I think at, whether this is performative or whether it's reality, it still appears as the demise of someone. He, he, you can tell it comes off as he's going through something. Like the walls are, you know, are closing in on him. So I think this I think that's why Kanye frustrates people because it's like this is a talented musical mastermind. He's a genius. He's given so much and it's not it's not it's just being lost it's being you know channeled the wrong way so i think that's why people have to care because they they do care about kanye um there's a percentage of the population who like we are just kind of like we don't care we we've accepted that this is who he is whatever he's gone through like we get it you know i know i'm i can imagine how hard it was when his mother died you know he's also going through this divorce on top of countless other things it could be a bait and switch like shay was telling me that balenciaga is there's suspicion that it's an entire social project and they're essentially trying to prove that they can put anything out there and because they have a name <coughs> people will go for it look i ain't got time for shay to be teaching you her conspiracy theories all right look i rock with shay and her her theories be making sense that's neither here nor there the point is Kanye was a great contributor. He wasn't a one-hit wonder. He was a an actual talented contributor to musical history. And I think is he no longer talented? He is talented, but his talent is being stifled or being has become he's become a distraction to his talent. And I think people are bothered by that. It's kind of like people being upset with Rihanna for not releasing new music. But at least Rihanna's doing productive stuff. You know, she's dropped a, a fashion line, used her lingerie, makeup, whatever. Um, dropped a baby, all that stuff. Um, Kanye is just frustrating people. And he's not using his skills for good stuff. Like, you know, but again, the way our society is set up, it takes triggers. Like, people want to be triggered. Like no one wants to admit it, but you people want to be triggered. Mm. Trigger triggering someone like this whole Lizzo thing that was a trigger. They gave this. They gave this. Sorry, I made myself laugh. I was rhyming words in my head. Uh, they gave this woman a crystal flute that belonged to a president that's two hundred years old. All the people who were probably qualified to blow this flute, and they gave it to her. That was triggering. And the Library of Congress probably recognized this. Now people probably tweet in the Library of Congress. Like, they're going to get sponsorship ads and all of this stuff. I didn't even know there was a Library of Congress. I've heard the term. I didn't know it was it was more than books. Figured that's where the Declaration of Independence was. Um, Kanye is triggering us because he's keeping himself relevant. Mm. And that could be taken in two ways. Maybe he doesn't have anything to put out. Maybe, you know, maybe the talent is stifled. Maybe he's going through so much that that creative part of his mind has been, you know, shut down, he locked down, put out challenged. Donda and Donda, too. Huh? He just put out Donda. Oh, I didn't even remember. I forgot. Um, it didn't do nothing for me. But I'm of the small percentage where I'm not concerned with Kanye. Donda was a good album. Okay. I think I heard one song. It was very good. And he said Jesus like 47 times in that song. Excuse me. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I burped. 
Uh, Dumb, so Dumb was very good. so I, I think it. I think he's just here to trigger people. He wants to stay. He needs to stay relevant in the in between because that's how our society is you will be we are there's cancel culture and then there's just forgetting culture and if you're not staying current if you're not doing something to keep you in the headlines to keep you relevant people will forget you so he is doing these things to trigger people's thought and to make sure he's front of mind changing his deleting all his posts from instagram and then making it his ex-mother-in-law his avatar his ex-mother-in-law like these are things that are keeping people talking i shouldn't know this stuff Wait, you do what? He turned. He made. He deleted all his posts off of Instagram. That he made Chris Jenner's picture, his profile picture on Instagram. I Is should that know like, a, like a homage thing, or no? Mm. He's calling her like the cult leader. Oh, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. Oh, uh, but like, but it, like Chris Jenner is like really, really powerful. Yeah, it, like it came out. Like she did some lie detector show, and it came out that she. Did we talk about this? That she, um, I guess they talked about, they asked her a question about the Ray J sex tape and like the lie detector response, like detect that she was lying. So Ray J, I guess, finally couldn't take it anymore. So he really, he went on like this Instagram rant and he was like, I'm a jerk. I know this. He used different words, but he was essentially saying he's, he knows he's an asshole, but he was like, I did not release this sex tape. He said, you know, for years, you know, they denied it. Well, I know, I know about this. That she, but the that Ray she, J thing, yeah. That there were apparently two sex tapes, and she watched both of them and decided which one to release. Or there were three, oh, and there's two more. The plot thickens. Yeah, yeah. Like I've heard, she's she's low key like sick. Well, I mean, look where I got them. I mean, yeah. Barbara Walter said. I remember I saw an interview that she did for the Kardashians. She said, "What is it like being famous for doing nothing?" And that's. I mean, if for a business, that's a bit, that's a boss business move. She has made her entire, with the exception of Rob, poor Rob. Um, she has made her entire family fruitful off of her dot. What should have been her daughter's misfortune. Like Kim Kardashian should not be a relevant name in society. Like based off of a sex tape. She was Paris Hilton's closet organizer. She was. What's Paris Hilton doing? She just got married. Like huh? a year ago, she got married to, a, to like a billionaire. Congratulations. Like nice. And I think she's planning on. Well, having, I mean, women don't don't tend to date down, so that's true. Um, <laughs> and then she's planning on having. I think she saved like some of her eggs, and she's going to try and have twins. And she's re- she's she's circled back. She's been in some Hilton commercials. I think she's trying to like. I didn't actually really care. Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, just, I, I just noticed curious. that she's been she's been around <laughs> even, more. I didn't. Well, what I didn't realize there was like so much that she's been into mm-hmm. lately. But I didn't think you were actually gonna go yeah. through. And the, then her mother is on. Are you still going? Real Housewives of okay. like Beverly Hills or something. That's, that's cool. She's accidentally said some racist things too. Mm-hmm. Actually, about Lizzo. Hey, speaking of accidentally race racist, you remember the video that we watched <laughs> with the door to door salesman? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, my name is Fernando. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I feel like it's scripted. Uh, I feel like it has to be scripted. Dude walked up. He was like, "We're going to the." We'll play it, <clears throat> but I'll. You know, let me find it. Let's see if I can. Find it. I I don't even know where to go. Where to go from this? Uh, but we were talking about Chris Jenner. Yeah, I think she is. She's very talented in the fact that she's been able to make her her family prosperous off of. Her daughter's sex tape, and she. I. I also think that she sacrificed her daughter for. For relevance, to make sure that her and her family stay relevant, and it's um. Oh, here it is. oh God. Hey, how you doing? Hey, sorry to bother you. What's I'm up? Fernando. I work at Peak Energy. We're a few doors down. We're in 1845. Okay. So we do solar around here. We're just coming around talking to niggers. Uh, Sorry, dude. Neighbors. I apologize, man. <laughs> no, man, that wasn't even... <laughs> but Fernando's Hispanic, so does he get a... Absolutely not. 
When I was in high school, <laughs> nah. like all of my Puerto Rican friends said the N word. I don't know where 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 that thing came from. I thought biggest, if you had I thought if you had melanin, you were allowed to biggest myth on earth. Absolutely not. And Fernando found out. I wonder if he got fired. Poor Fernando. <laughs> Poor Fernando. He tried. He, he, he was tried. going around all the <laughs> Fernando. Then he just said, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Like <laughs> That's gonna make up for it. Like he called him Jerome instead of Jamal. Like, nah, you called this man. No, he said he was going around. So, <laughs> so that means you need to choose if that's what you identify oh. yourself as. Oh my gosh. Um, David right. watched this video like 15 times and <laughs> cried. <laughs> I was like, sir, it's not that serious. Oh, uh, it's funny. Um, so that's, that's fresh vibes this week. Um, it's, it, it felt good to be back. It's been, it's been a while before you end. I know we're running long, we but, are, we um, I was trying to finish. I know you were, um, I was trying to finish the episode. <laughs> Anyway, I I have been on this this rant, this life living of being really transparent. So David's not prepared for this. So I'm really just going to put all our business out there. Um, so I would say this past season, and I don't know what episode this season we're on right now, but um, I personally had felt like we had been a little off. I felt like, you know, we'd record an episode. I felt like the vibes weren't vibing and I was really concerned about the podcast. Like, was it giving the same energy we were giving last year? I felt like we were getting a lot more compliments last year. We had more engagement from, you know, our followers, um, our family, our friends who listen, but we've also, we've been, we've had some ups and downs. Like we've had some episodes where I wasn't vibing with him. He wasn't vibing with me. And I think because we were in it, like we could see it in the episodes, but, um, that's, that's me being transparent. Cause I feel like a lot of people are not transparent when it comes to just the issues that are reality that happen in marriage and relationships and having three kids and all of that stuff. So I wanted to put that out there. Um, kind of like an apology because I feel like we weren't giving our best and for you to take the time to watch or listen to what we have to say we should be giving you our best because that's your time that you could be allocating to something else um so there's that um I also want to apologize to you for the moments that I wasn't vibing and I knew I wasn't vibing and I still presented myself here um because I feel like that's not it's not fair to falsify the self that I'm presenting um so that's my apology to you and not bringing my best for this project that we took on together during the pandemic um that was supposed to be fun and just supposed to be us having conversations and people coming into this um but I also want to shout out Specifically, I want to shout out Sharon, who complimented the podcast. Uh, I was work, I was volunteering at a convention and or a conference, excuse me, and she really, I would say, recharged me because the the podcast became a task, and I wasn't enjoying it anymore. It was kind of like, oh, okay. We have to record. In my mind, I know we have to record. I'm waiting for you to be like, okay, we're going to record tonight. Hoping for you to be like, no, we'll record another night. And looking forward to you canceling a, a recording. And that's not how I want this to be. Because this has been, you know, looking at past episodes, thinking of conversations we've had, the way we've been able to bond. It's a big deal. So I thank her because she complimented us. And she said... I feel like I'm in the room with you guys and I'm hanging with you guys in the conversation. And that small compliment may, meant a lot because I'm over here thinking like we suck this season. We're not giving, you know, 100 percent. People aren't really engaging. But just to have someone give that feedback, it meant a lot. So uh, I wanted to specifically say thank you. Um, 
even to I mean, there are a handful of people who still are engaging, you know, Missy will give feedback and all of that. So I appreciate you guys because I felt like we weren't doing a good job. So it means I really don't have to vibe with him for us to give to give a good episode because people are like, oh, the episode was good. And I'm like, I we weren't even like cool. So um, that's just us. That's just me trying to be transparent on our behalf. Like. It, it, it's a lot of work um, putting the podcast together. I mean, I'm sitting here with a sleeping two-year-old in my lap. Like we're working around not just our own schedules, but other people's schedules, our lives, our work. We're tired. Sometimes we're happy. Sometimes we're unhappy. So, you know, just hearing, you know, appreciation from people, that's that's a big deal. And, and it is appreciated and it is acknowledged and it does resonate with us. So I did want to mention that before we closed out because I don't know that I'd remember it next week. Okay. Well said. Thank you. That's, that's a high vibration. It's, rare, it's a high vibration. Yeah. <clears throat> Do I need, are you expecting me to respond or you know. just needed to I mean, say, you, your, say your piece? If you don't have anything to say, you don't got to talk. Okay. <laughs> you don't know what I talk? Um, not really ready to, to to discuss this topic, so it's kind of kind of on the spot. But I guess the toughest thing about this, much five, not the toughest thing, but what makes it unique is that rather than being friends strictly or people who met online and shared a common interest in talking about culture, pop culture, just, you know, topics of the day, we're actually married mm-hmm. uh, and married at a very trying time of both the marriage and then uh, in parenthood, we've got two kids under the age of three, one kid uh, who's almost seven. Which really means she's a teenager. Which really means she's a teenager. And then we're also going into our eighth year of marriage, which is around the time, you know, a lot of them get tested. Um, so exams up over here. <laughs> ERGs. So, <laughs> you know, it's just a, like you said, it's just a lot going on. And um, it's hard for it not to bleed over if... You're not feeling me. I'm not feeling you. We're not feeling each other. Um, but I think, I think a positive thing about it is that, you know, we still somewhat push through and still try to put out um, episodes. So I think that that's, you know, that's a testament to commitment, even if you're not really feeling it. Cause I mean, you know, I, Thing I told you last night, you know, or maybe it was this morning, I can't remember. You know, I, I been in kind of like peaks and I've been in sort of like a valley or a lull with the podcast just because there's just like a lot to do with it. <clears throat> Let alone finding things that are that are interesting to talk about, making sure you know what, what they are. Um finding the time and and schedules, but just just to set up transferring stuff editing and getting it up it's a job it is um and last year i enjoyed it i loved it like i would be up all night Mm -hmm. putting stuff together and get up and go to work um i haven't pulled any all-nighters yet this season um and normally it's just been like all right i'll just put it out when i get it out um so, I mean, hearing the compliment you got, uh, it, you know, it, it sort of refocused me as well, um, as well as the compliment I got uh, yesterday. I think it's interesting. We got compliments in a uh, two week or a week, two week window, week window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was last weekend. You were at the at the conference. So, um, but you know, I too apologize if you know. We haven't been giving, been giving our uh, full potential Then haven't been living up to our full potential. And uh, we, you know, we kind of talked today and we kind of 
probably started the conversation. I don't know that we actually finished it of what we actually want Rush Vibes to be. Do we just want it to be a little thing we do once a week or do we want it to try to be something more? Um, Y'all have to stay tuned for the answer. But uh, I think, you know, it's good to be aligned and uh, on the same page. And I don't know what's gotten into you lately. I'm going to keep sending you to these conferences, but you've been real transparent lately. And I actually love it. You a visionary. So you keep. I'm vibrating you high. Keep, you keep vibrating high. It's a I royal rock, vibration. I rock with it. Not hood rat. Um, so, yeah. So on that note, uh, hopefully we can get uh, our next guest in here next week. If they're if they're available for us to uh, have them on and highlight them, and then we'll uh, yeah, let's keep going from there. Almost to seventy episodes, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of episodes. Um, seventy five is is coming. That's like the the big milestone. Seventy five episodes. This is crazy that we've done this seventy five times sat down and hit record and talked for like at least an hour. So, um, for anyone who's there still here rocking with us, appreciate it. It's a lot of episodes. Yeah. Whether you watch them all or not. And I'm really speaking to my mother who's like five episodes behind inexplicably. Dang. Inexplicably. We still appreciate you too. So, YouTube, subscribe, share. Every five weeks before we get her feedback on this. <laughs> subscribe, share, like. Uh, we're on Instagram, Rush Vibes, Facebook as well. Um, and uh, be sure to connect with us there and uh, engage because we haven't begun the engagement that we got last year. So if you're somebody who engaged with us last year and you haven't been as engaging, be more engaging. Yes, and we will engage back. Don't be, don't be hood rat. High vibrations. High only. vibrations. Be a leader. About to change the podcast name to Rushed Vibrations. Oh, I already got the episode for this. I already told you. So, uh, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. Fall is here. It's hoodie season. Layer up. That's all I got. Okay. <laughs> We out. We're gonna go put this kid to bed. So that'll be good. Bye. Bye. See you later. Deuces. Hey, hey. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too fucking. Stop me now.